Never sleep in your car on a road trip. By one underscore planch underscore man. I'm from Connecticut. I was in a long distance relationship with a girl from Georgia and would often make road trips down to visit her. I don't really mind. I love road trips. I've driven across the United States and back all on my own. There's just something about traveling the highways of the U.S. by yourself that's just so freeing. To save money, I would sleep in my car. It's not so bad. It's basically camping in a metal tent. Makes you feel like you're really rough in it. I just recline the seat back, keep the key in the ignition just in case, and doze off. No, I don't put anything up to block the windows for privacy. Maybe I should have. The trip down south is a comfortable two-day drive. My stop would usually be somewhere along the Virginia-North Carolina border. So, for my previous trip, that's exactly where I stopped that night. Rest stops were often less trafficked and thus quieter than truck stops. Normally I would have stopped at a Love's, but I was so tired that I settled for the first rest stop I saw. It was oddly vacant that night with only a couple lone cars sitting forlorn under the amber street lamps. Most likely travelers with the same idea as myself. I pulled into a parking spot away from the others, under the shadow of a tree and far from the street lamps. I figured I would have more privacy there as opposed to being bathed in light. So, I did my usual thing, locked my doors, opened the window just a hair for ventilation, kept my key in, reclined the seat, and went to sleep. I was never interrupted on any of these car camping nights. So I never suspected anything on this one. Then a sharp tap woke me up. At first, I thought I had heard it in my dream. I opened my eyes, a bit confused. Since I was leaned back, I was facing the ceiling and couldn't see anything. I hear another tap like a tiny object hitting a hard surface. It came in an irregular rhythm. Was it raining? Was water dripping onto my windshield? I'm under a tree, maybe something fell from the branches. Maybe a squirrel or a bird dropped something. What if a squirrel was climbing around my car? Or what if? It wasn't an animal. The thought occurred to me that it might very well be a person poking around outside. What did they want? Were the doors locked? Yes. The keys were in the ignition, I can leave in an instant. Still, I lay there, completely still, pretending to be asleep. Pretending I hadn't heard anything. Hoping whoever it was, they would leave me alone. It was better to not find out. I was too afraid to find out. It was better to stay here in blissful ignorance. Still the tapping continued. I had to do something. There was no way I was just going to stay there. I had to look. My heart was pounding. In that moment, it was deafeningly loud. Whoever was out there could probably hear it. I decided. I was going to look. I was going to raise my head up and see what was making the noise. So that's what I did. What met my eyes sent a jolt through entire body. Every muscle fiber locked up in pure shock at what I saw. The faint glow of the street lamps cast just enough light for me to make out what I was looking at. There in the windshield, staring directly at me, was a face. Someone, I presumed to be a woman, was lying on my hood her face pressed right up against my windshield. Her face was completely still, locked in a permanent grin. I froze in overwhelming terror. The eyes I stared into appeared to have rolled back, showing only the whites. The nose was turned up, pressed painfully into the glass. The lips stretched wide, revealing horrid rotten teeth. Even in the darkness, I could tell her skin was sickly pale, contrasting her long, filthy black hair. Whoever this was, she was clearly not in her right mind. 
I don't know how long I sat there, too afraid to move. Finally, I got a grip on myself and shot my hand to the ignition. It turned over, making, in that instant, the most beautiful sound I ever heard. For a split second, I was afraid I might be caught in a horror movie scenario, the one where the car won't crank as the killer approaches. I reversed as fast as I could, trying not to give this creeper time to try anything. In my panic, I remember activating the windshield wipers in a futile attempt to get her off. I thought, was I about to drive out of here with some wacko holding onto my hood? Thankfully, I didn't have to worry about that, because as soon as I stopped, the woman leapt off, landing on all fours. Seeing my opportunity, I shifted into drive and gunned it, right as I saw her reaching for the driver's side door. With my foot on the gas, I sped out of the parking lot. Behind me, I heard her let out a piercing shriek like that of an animal. I looked in my rearview mirror and for a split second I thought I saw her chasing me, running on all fours, her black hair swinging wildly around her. I couldn't get a good look as I rounded a curve in the road leading out of the rest stop and merged with the highway. There, I picked up speed and drove through the night. I did not dare stop again until I saw the morning light. 